Steve Jobs envisioned a world where everyone owned a personal computer. Who knows Steve Jobs? He envisioned that the world, everyone owned a personal computer. How about this person? Bill Gates. Microsoft was founded with a vision of a computer on every desk and in every home. We've never wavered from that vision. See, they're trying to reach out the world. They're trying to reach out the whole earth. And how about this person? Larry Page of Google. Basically, our goal is to organize the world's information and to make it universally accessible and useful. You know what? By the way, according to Forbes uh, survey, it says that uh, the, num th the number one, bo the most valuable brand in the whole world is, number one, is Apple. Second one is the Microsoft. Third is Google. But uh, this next slide is not in the top five, but it's in top ten. Facebook helps you connect and share with people in your life. In a nutshell, Facebook wants to bring people together. Mark Zuckerberg envisioned to bring people closer together. But in our church, we have a vision to bring people close to God. This is our vision. Just in case you don't know our vision, this is our vision. To be a loving church, expressing life to people of all nations to become disciples for the glory of God. Can you memorize this? Can you help me memorizing this today? In order for you to memorize this, divide it into five. To be a loving church, Expressing life to people of all nations to become disciples for the glory of God. Easy, right? Divide it into five. You could easily memorize this. I would like you to help me. Let's, come on. Since this is our vision, we have to memorize it. Okay, on this part, please say to be a loving church. To be a loving church. In this side, the center, expressing life. Thank you, Lord. Uh, in this section, to people of all nations, and I will say to become disciples, if I said to become disciples, all of us would say for the glory of God. Okay? To be a loving church, to people of all nations, to become disciples, Let's see if you know it's still. All right. Let's, let's memorize it, okay? To be a loving church, to become disciples, who could, who could state it? Who could, who could say it in one, in one whole sentence? <laughs> to be a loving church, Expressing life to people of all nations to become a disciples for the glory of God. Divided into five, you could easily say it, right? We have to memorize it. We have to let this vision be ingrained in our hearts, in our mind. We have to state it always so that we will be reminded that this is our vision to be a loving church, expressing life to people of all nations to become disciples for the glory of God. Who could say it? Oh, again? <laughs> to become disciples for the glory of God. Jen, can you say, state it? Come on. Wow! Thank you, Lord. There's one person in the room who already memorized our vision. 
Young people, I would like to hear from young people. Come on, young people. Come on, Justin. Come on. Come on, divide into five. To be a loving church. <laughs> uh, to be a loving church, expressing life to people of all nations, to become a disciple, to become disciples for the glory of God. All right? I would like to hear two more, please. I would like I would really would like to focus on our vision today. Please help me with this. Come on. We will not go, we will not move on and Unless I hear two more people who would state this vision. Come on, please. Oh, come on. Come on, stand up. They would like to hear it. Oh, all right, all right. Amen, amen, amen. Who else? Come on, please. Come on, one more. Gilbert? Gilbert. <laughs> 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 I am quiet, quiet. To people, people all. to become disciples. Oh, all right. Joyce, can you please? Right. Stand up, Joyce. Come on, stand up, Joyce. <laughs> to people. To people. Amen. Amen. And who's the winner? I think Jen is the winner. Right? All right. Last one. To be a loving church. To be this to become disciples for the glory of God. Amen. Now, thank you, Lord. Remember, just divide it into five sections. That's it. You could easily memorize that vision. All right, so that's our vision. Sorry, sorry. There you are. Okay. If we want to achieve our goal or vision or destination, we need to have a roadmap. We need a roadmap. Our vision serves as a framework for our roadmap and guides every aspect of our church ministry. Don't think it's just for the church. Even for yourself, you need a roadmap that would guide you on all aspects of your life, on all areas. You need a roadmap. Church, I'm going to speak to you today about the roadmap of our church, and you could also apply it to your personal life, the roadmap of our church or your personal life. So, of course, our roadmap is our vision. Every Christian should be directed or be guided by a roadmap. Basically, our roadmap is the Bible, the Word of God. And our vision is inspired by the Bible, by the scriptures that talks about the great commandment and the great commission. And that's our text for today. If you're going to divide our vision into two, the upper part would be the great commandment, love. The second part would be the Great Commission, which is to go and make disciples. In order for you to understand it clearly, I have the scripture. Jesus replied, the Lord, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like this, love your neighbor. Simply means love God and love people. 
passion for God, passion for people. That's the first part. We would try to fulfill this vision. Second part of our vision is the Great Commandment, the Great Commission, which is said, that says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. That's the second part. In fulfilling our goal, our vision, we are already fulfilling the Great Commandment and the Great Commission. And if we, if we uh, fulfill our Great Commission and Great Commandment, we are also fulfilling our vision. This is our road map. I would like us to focus in this next 30 minutes or 35 on our vision in details. To be a loving church, expressing life to people of all nations, to become disciples for the glory of God. I would like to focus first on loving church. Loving church, this is your part. Of course, our verse is about, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God, love your neighbor. This is the first scripture. We are fulfilling this in our church. This is the first pit stop. This is the starting point, church, of our roadmap. We have to love. Without love, we cannot move on. Without love, this church is just a social club. This would become a Lions Club, Rotary Club, or what have you. The starting point of our roadmap is love. It all starts here. Love. Love spelled as what? T-I-M-E, time. If you love God, you have to spend T-I-M-E to Him. You have to spend time with God. You have to spend time with God in prayer if you would like to love God. I'm telling you, this is the start. Without loving God, we can't go further. We have to start here. This is the starting point of our roadmap. You have to love God first. And then if you love God, then you would love people. If we truly love God, we should be able to love people. Let me tell you a secret, wives. Don't be afraid if your husband is head over heels in love with God. If he's on top of the list. Because if that case, if that happens, your husband will love you even more. And vice versa. Wives or sub-husband, it's okay if your wives love God so much. Head over heels in love with God. If that happens, you will be loved in return. More than you could imagine. More than you could ask for. It is impossible to love God and hate people. <laughs> it is impossible to, hate, to love God and hate people. Because God says in His command, love God and love people. Love your enemy. Love those who persecute you, even those who are unlovable. You have to love them. That's why this is our starting point. We cannot go further without loving God and loving people. The very first and second greatest commandment is love God and love people. That's why we are going to start here. Loving God, loving people. Do you love God? You have to love people. Because I love you, I will not hurt you. Because you love me and I love you, we will not hurt each other. Because I love you, I will not cut you off on the road. Because I love you, I will not be envious about you. I will not take advantage of you. Because I love you, I will think first about your, about your uh, situation and not mine. Because I love you. I will not rob you because I love you and you love me. We will not deceive each other. I love you and I, that's why I won't rape you. Because I love you, I will not kill you. Because I love you, I will not do anything bad about you. If you love me and we love each other, I think rape, murder, deceitfulness, separation, all these things would be lessened in this world, will be controlled because we love each other. Imagine a world loving one another. 
That's why in this church, this is our starting point to love God and love people. We would like to see a church composed of loving individual, loving God and loving people. That's our church vision, to be a loving church. I wonder, you know what? Six years ago, who are we? And I and some two elders with us. I, I, was, I was wondering why we put loving church here. We just would like to have a vision. And all of a sudden, when I was praying, I wrestled in prayer with God. Lord, why did we put loving church? I didn't realize that this loving church is the very commandment of God to become a loving church, to love God, to love people. I thought we just put it there just to have a vision. But now I came to realize that we have to love, church, even the unlovable. Even sometimes your husband or your wife seems unlovable, you have to love them. You, love, you have to love your children if you love God. If you say you love God and you don't, you don't love your, you, the people around you, I don't think you really love God. If you truly love God, you will pray for that person. Lord, help me to love this person. I hate him, Lord, but you have told me to love him or love her. Therefore, I will pray for her until such time that I already love him or her. We could learn to love God and express that love in life group. We are relaunching really our life group today. We are going to express love to our life group. I'm not saying you cannot express your love during Sundays. Don't get me wrong. But when you have life group, because Christian life is not just about Sundays. It's 24-7. And when you have life group, you are committed to people who would pray for you, who would call you when you're sick, who would help you. Who would you, who, who, you don't just meet every Thursday or Friday or Tuesday. But you always, you're, con, you're trying to connect to each other in Facebook, in texting, how are you, my dear sister? I didn't see you last Friday. I didn't see you last Sunday. How are you? Are you all okay? That's loving church. You express that. That's why we have to have a life group where we could express love of God and share it to others to love people. Jesus says, love God and love people. In Luke, do this and you will live, Jesus said to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to this uh, lawyer. Jesus, how could I have eternal life? Jesus said, love God and love people and you will live. Do this and you will live, said, to, said Jesus. Love God and get involved with people. Love God and get involved with life group. Because there we are going to express love. Others might say, oh, Pastor John, I also have life than church. I have already given my life on, to church on Sunday. That's enough, Pastor John. Do you see, Pastor John, I have life for my friends, for my family, for my, you know, for my own self. I have life other than church. Let me tell you, church. If you call yourself a Christian, if you say you are born again, if you say you are a child of God, then coming to church, meeting with people, helping people, serving God is your lifestyle. This is already our life. True Christians, true followers of Jesus, true disciples, this is already our life. What, what, what else, what kind of life you're still looking for? This is the life we have in Christ, to serve God, to serve people, to love God, and to meet, to meet with one another and love one another, encourage one another. That's our life. I've been doing all these things, but still I could enjoy my friends. I could still enjoy holidays. I could still enjoy my family, even though I'm spending so much time on the ministry, on in ministering people. Why? It's about prioritizing things that's important to you. You have to prioritize it. But if you love God, you prioritize him and all the rest. If you take care of God's business, he would go to take care of your business. Church, our roadmap starts with love. Love, 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 love. Love people. Again, let me tell you, Jesus said, do this and you will live. Do it and express it. Do it and express the greatest commandment in your life. Second, I would like to point out about the second part, which is expressing life. When you love God and love people, then you would express it. You have to express life. And Luke 10, I won't go there. 
it also mentioned this commandment of love God and love people. One expert of the law asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life, as I have said a while ago? Jesus asked him back, what was the law says in order for you to have eternal life? This lawyer, this expert of the law is trying to trap him. So what, how do you have eternal life? Jesus Christ answered him back with a question. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus Christ said to this expert lawyer. You have answered correctly. You know what's the answer, but do this and you will live. You know the answer, but you're not doing it. Do this and you will live now. We have to express the love of God and love people. We have to express life. Expressing life is another pit stop. First, the starting point is to love God. Love people. We are loving church. And second, our roadmap, expressing life. We have to express our life. When we think of people expressing themselves, it's often through art, through forms of like poetry, or maybe music, or maybe sculpture, or painting. They would like to express their lives through music, through those kinds of arts, right? But in this church, we have a unique form of expressing our life. Love God and love your neighbor. Do this and you will live. You know how do we express life here in Life Expressions Fellowship? For, for many of you who, who's new to our church, I would like to tell you how we express life in church. First is we learn that mission. We learn. We have to learn. As long as you have breath, you have to learn. Never stop learning in school. Never stop learning even you are old. In this church, we have to learn the Word of God daily. We have to learn the Word of God in church. We have to learn the Word of God at home. We have to learn, to learn the Word of God in our life group, in our small group. We have to learn about God because when you learn about God, that's the time your faith would increase. That's the time you would, you would, you would love God even more because you know how big He is, how good He is, how faithful God is, and then you would be intimate with Him. But if you're not learning, if you don't know about God, you will not be intimate with God. How can you be intimate with me if you don't know me? How could I be intimate with my, my, my beautiful wife if I, can, I don't know about her? That's why I keep on learning about her. I know what he wants, I know what, what she wants, and I know what she doesn't want. I know she wants uh, dillies, you know that? I know she wants a cucumber. She wants those things, and I try to eat those things, though I, I, I'm not fond of it. You learn and become intimate with God. And when you become intimate with God, you can fall in, you fell in love with God. You love him so much. You would like to worship him. You would like to pray. You would like to, you would like to be in his presence always because you would know him so much. You learn to be intimate with him. You worship him. That's why no wonder why people here came here. Oh, I love you, Lord. We worship. Because you know, you're, you, you experience him. You know who's God whom you are worshiping. You become intimate with him. But without learning, you cannot be intimate with God. That's why you have to start learning God so that you become intimate. And when you become intimate with God, that's the time you're going to express it. It's overflowing. Out of the overflow of the heart's mouth, it speaks. It would come out from you. You're going to share to other people, and then you're going to fellowship. You will fellowship with other brethren. Brother, sister, I'm so in love with God. My heart is overflowing of joy. I would like to release it. I would like to share it to you. And we'll, let's fellowship. Come on, let's selfie. Come on, let's eat together. Come on, let's study the Word of God. Let's pray together. And let's jump together. Come on, let's loll together. Fellowship. When you fellowship, that's the time you'll be strengthened. No wonder there are life groups here who would, who would finish until 3 o'clock in the morning. They love the fellowship. But it won't stop there. If you fellowship, it would overflow. You have to go out and evangelize. You have to bring people as well to your group, to our church, in order for them to know Jesus Christ, in order for them to know about God. And then they would also learn. See the cycle of life? That's how we express life in this church. And again, those people who learn, they will become intimate. And those whom he evangelized, they would learn, they would become intimate with, and they would fellowship as well. And they would evangelize as well. And they would learn as well. See the cycle of life? You always do like that. 
You express light. If you express your life, your life will be become meaningful and purposeful. We're not here just to evangelize. We're also here to fellowship. We're not only here to be intimate with God. We have to do those four things. That's our mission, learning intimacy, fellowship, evangelism. That's why we posted it here, in order for you to see it every Sunday, in order for you to be reminded that you are here for a purpose. You're not here to just take a cup of coffee and to just chat with your friends. You are here to learn the Word of God. You are here to be intimate with God. You are here to fellowship with brothers and sisters. You are here to evangelize. That's who we are. That's our DNA. If you know who you are, you will never be misled. I'm here to evangelize. I'm here to take fellowship. I'm just here to just sit down. And and you're not here to just sit down there and just uh, uh, see the wrong things about the music, about the music. You are here because you have to do something for God. Because it is your way of life. And if you do that, your life will become meaningful and purposeful. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, church, if you, would like, if you would like your life to become meaningful and purposeful, you start expressing your life. And thirdly, I would like to point out or to focus on the people of all nations. See, we're, divide, we're dividing into five, the people of all nations. This is your part. This is reaching people. We have to reach people. Or go, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, in the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey Whatever I have commanded you. So this is our third pit stop. Third pit stop. First is love God. If you love God, you express your life. And when now you express life, you have to reach out to people. You are ready to reach out for people. We are called to go and reach all nations. <gasps> all nations. This is scary. Rich people through life groups. How many of us came here because of some crusades or a Christian concert, camps, or church big outreach? How did you start in the church? Because of crusades or concerts or camps? Anyone here who came to church because of those things? Can you please raise your hand? Joe, what kind of crusades? You came here, you were invited? Youth camp. First, because of that, you came to church. Who else? Who else? No more? How about those people? Became, they came to church because of a friend, because of a family member. Who came to church because of that? Can you please raise your hand? All of us. Church, we are going to reach out through life group, through relationship. Yes, we could reach out to people through crusades, big, big events, but you know what? The best tool we could use is life group because in our life group, there we could establish relationship. There we could bring our friends, our family, our dad, our mom to the small group because they trust us. That's why we could easily invite them. We have a relationship. And in our life group, we establish relationship. That's why we are going to rich people of all nations through life group. Our main evangelism tool in this church is life group. That's why we are going to strengthen our life group. That's why we are relaunching it today, church. We bring friends. We bring people close to us, to our life group. Let's see Mark Zuckerberg, how he reached out for his target people. Can you see Mark Zuckerberg there? They got one-to-one. This is his uh, 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 target people. Small groups, friends, community, and the world. You know what are the things he used? to reach out these people? Any, any idea? What are the things he used? You know it. There you are. One-to-one -one he used video call. Small groups he used messenger. Friends he used Facebook. Community he used SMS. And the world he used Instagram. But how about us, Life Experience Fellowship? How are we going to reach out for these people? For the one-to-one, -one, the small groups, friends, community, and world. And this is our strategy. This is our roadmap. If we would like to reach people, we have to have this strategy. First, one-to-one, -one, we are going to use personal evangelism. Sorry, I'm using iMac. We're using HP. I think they're not compatible. So we are going to use one-to-one, 
personal evangelism. You have your friend. You have your workmate. Use personal evangelism. I've taught some of you here about one-to-one evangelism. Share your love. Share your life, your testimony to him. Don't be afraid. It's about your classmate and you or your workmate or you. Then you share your life to him. Personal evangelism. We are going to use the tool. And for in the near future, we are going again to teach you how to use personal evangelism to reach out for one-to-one. And about small groups, we all know how to use, how, how we are going to, to reach out for our small groups. Of course, small groups, life group. Life group. There you are. I think we need to buy a new computer, an, I, an iMac. Uh, small group. Life group. We are going to use life group in order for us to reach our small group. We are going to establish life groups in so many areas. If you happen here, you're a new person here, a new attendee here. If you would like to establish a life group in your area, please let me know. And we are going to start a life group in your place. It's, we don't need 10 people. We just need you and another person and me. That's it. That's already a life group. We are going to position ourselves in this community, in this nation, with our life groups in order for us to reach those small groups. Please let me know if you would like to start a life group in your area. I'm willing to start it with you. How about our friends? How are we going to reach out to them? You know, friends, they don't come to you. Oh, Moses, would you like... Would you like to invite me in your church? I would like to go. No, they won't come to you like that. We have to create a special activity in order for them to be invited, in order for them to know, oh, is that what happened? Like the concert, like, a, like something we do, or a special activity in order for them to, be, to, to, to get to know you and get to know some people in the church. We're going to create special activity in order for us to reach these friends. Okay? How about community? How we are going to reach out for our community? We are going to have a community service. Someone came to me and said, Pastor Jun, why we don't help some elders, elder uh, people to, 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 lo- to, to mow their lawn, to clean their, their house without any string attached, no string attached. Just blessing them and loving them. That's community service. If they would like to be, to, to be invited to our church, so be it. But we, don't want, we will not invite them because oh, I'm, going to lawn, I'm going to mow your lawn and then first come to our church. Okay. I'll give you a, a, a free sausage sizzles, but you have to come to our church. No, we are going to have a community service in order for us to just bless them, love the community, and let God work in their lives. And then, who, where, what church you go to? I would like to go there because there's something in you. You are so good. You are so cool. You're so loving. I would like to come to church. We're going to reach our community to community service. And how about the world? How we are going to reach the world? How? Any idea? Huh? Of course, prayer. But we are all strong with this. We are all strong with this in the, to reach, reaching out the world through social media. Mm. We love that. Yes, at first, we are going to reach these people through social media. But later on, we are going to reach them by going to, far, to, to the uttermost part of the earth. You know? I would like to thank... I would like to thank our dear sister, uh, Miley, who's really doing a great job on our Facebook page. I hope that you are looking, trying to, to check your Facebook page, the LFE Facebook page. They're trying to, to, to enhance it and see how he managed the, 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 the sermon, how, he, uh, how she uh, uh, cut it, it, to summarize it into three minutes. No? That's a gift. If you happen to be blessed by that, why not share it? And then you are blessing. I'm telling you, some of, my, some of my sisters and my friends, they're sharing it to Japan and to the Philippines. And many of them are being blessed. May those three minutes uh, video. In that way, we are already reaching out the world. It doesn't matter if, we, if they won't come to church. Hey, Pastor John, they won't come to church anyway. They won't come to our church. Why, we should, why, should be, why would we be bothered to come and, and preach to them? Come on. Even on the uttermost part of the earth, Ethiopia, Africa, if they... If they if they learn Jesus Christ through us, that's already a, 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 throw, a, a crown in our head. Church, we are going to reach out for people through social media. Personal evangelism, live group specialty, community service, reaching people. If you have ideas how we could do all these things, please 
come to open and we will discuss it. Community service, social media, special activity, please help us. We cannot do it alone. Your elders, your leaders cannot do this. We cannot do it by ourselves. We need you. We need each other. And fourthly, to become disciples. Our port pit stop. First is love. We have to start with love, loving church, and then expressing light, and then people of all nations, reaching people, and now the fourth is discipling people. It's not just about teaching people and bringing people in. We have to teach them to become a strong disciple or else they would just come and go out of our church. We have to retain them to our church. We have to teach them how to be rooted in the Word of God so that if there are turmoils, if there are pressures, storms in life, we, they have something to stand on, which is the Word of God. We have to disciple these people. Okay? We grow the church quantity through reaching out, but we grow the church quality through discipleship. We grow the church through inviting people to come to our church, but we grow people in discipling them in life group. And these four points, you are going to hear this more of, uh, oftentimes to, uh, to, to your life group. Upward, inward, outward, forward. In discipling people, we need these four things. Upward, inward, outward, forward. What's those upward, inward, forward? Pastor John, don't worry. Your life group leaders and your interns know this already. I've taught them these things, and they're going to bring it down to you. You have to have the strong upward. You have to have strong inward and outward and forward. What's upward? Outward, upward is about growth, grow in relationship with God. Okay? A disciple, a Christian, you have to grow in relationship with God. Upward. Say upward. 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 You have to grow in your upward through prayer, through communion with God, through reading the Word of God. You have to be strong on your upward. But, but it doesn't stop there. You still, you still have to have this inward. Inward is about grow in relationship with others. Say inward. Sorry, because you're going to hear that from your life group leaders, from your life group, those words, that's why I'm trying to repeat it to you. Your inward is your growing relationship with the people around you, on the church, on the life group. So you have to, be, you have to grow in that area. About the outward, say outward. 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 outward is growing in reaching out. You have to grow from outward, inward, outward, and forward. Forward is growing in raising disciples. I told you, it's not just about growing the numbers, but you have to grow the quality of your life group of our church by raising a disciples. So in a life group setting, you have to have these four components, upward, inward, outward, and forward. All these four components should be strong. But if you only got two, that's not a holistic life group, you would still fail. If you're only strong in upward and inward and you don't have outward and forward, this is not a holistic life group. We have to strengthen this four area in our life group. You, you all have, this disciple that you are raising, you have, this, this person should be strong in relationship with God, in relationship with others, and reaching out also, and also discipling people, raising leaders, raising people to become strong. See, church, we don't just love and love and love here. Because if you truly love, you would express that love to others. And if you express your love to others, you would reach out to people and bring them to church. And if you, didn't bring them, if you bring them to church, it's not just about that. You have to strengthen and disciple this person to become strong. That's our vision. And if we do all these things, then we are going to glorify God. That's the only time we could glorify God if we already disciple these people. Jesus said, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. Jesus spoke this word. He glorified the Father who sent him by doing, by finishing the work God the Father gave Jesus Christ. And what's that? To seek and save what was lost. And when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he said, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. Did you finish the work of God for you? By bringing the lost by sharing the word to others and bring it to church and disciple them. It's also said in Isaiah 43, 6b and verse 7, Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth 
Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Church, we are created for God's glory. You are not created just to consume the air. You're not, just, you're not created just to consume food and, what, and just to make money. But you are actually created for a purpose that's to give glory to the Father. I am created for God's glory. And this is Jesus said, this, Jesus said, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. You would like to give glory to God? Then bear much fruit. Orange tree gives orange. An apple tree bears apple. Christian bears what? Another Christian. A disciple bears another disciple. And that, if you're going to disciple, if you're going to create another Christian, bring to God, and that's for Father's glory. And John 15, 16 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you, God said. I appointed you so that you, bear, you go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Meaning to say, you disciple them. People are not just, just who hear the word and then left. Fruit that will last. The fruit is your disciple. The fruit is the Christian or the friend that became Christian. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Oh, there's a blessing on giving God glory. If you, glor- if you glorify God through doing what he asks you to do, church, whatever you ask in my name, Father will give you. Because we would like to give glory to God. Only thing that you're going to do is for his glory. Then he will do whatever you ask in his name. So this is our roadmap. That's our roadmap. Loving church. Expressing life. Reaching people, discipling people, glorifying God. There was a story about a, an old man who happened to uh, walking on the shore. After that storm, the starfish uh, was spilled over uh, the shore. Thousands, ten, th- tens of thousands of starfish on the shore. And then this old man saw a young boy kept on bending and throwing things on the, on the sea. And then he, he went to that boy, he said, what are you doing? I am throwing the starfish on the sea. Because they, might not, they, might, uh, they, they won't survive if the sun comes out. Oh boy, you lad. You know what? There are tens of thousands of starfish here. I think you won't be able to make any difference. Starfish, there are tens of thousands of starfish here. Look on the shore, they're dying. Why bother to throw one starfish? He said to the boy. And the boy said he got one more, and then he threw on the water. See, I made a difference in that one. Don't be overwhelmed, church, by reaching out the world. But be faithful on what you have right now, on what's on your hand. The first thing is you have to love God. How can, I bring, how can I grow my life group, Pastor June? They are so hard-headed. They are, they are not committed to my life group. How could I grow them? Come on, don't be overwhelmed by that. Love God first. The problem is that we are so overwhelmed with a big task. But we forgot loving God. Love God first. And you will start loving these people even though they are so annoying. Even though they are so uncommitted. You are, we are so overwhelmed by the big tasks of the world, reaching out the lost, Africa, India, China. But we forget the main thing, the first point, the start, loving God. You have to be a loving God, a loving church, loving God and loving people. Then express your life. Reach people, disciple people, glorifying God, church. This is our roadmap. I cannot do it by myself. God impressed it to me. I am rallying it to you. I need you. We need each other. We have to start loving. This is the start. You have to love God. And you will love your neighbor. You will love your family. You will love your children. You will even love your enemy. Love God, love people. Express life. Learning intimacy, fellowship, evangelism. We are going to reach people through personal evangelism. Life group, special activity, community service, and social
Nietzsche. 